Hello everyone, this big surprise is another vlog review today. This time it's going to be of Monster Hunter World. Now, I don't have any footage of this game to show you beforehand, unlike all the other games, because it's not out on PC yet. And I don't have, I'm not going to buy another $300 worth of equipment just to do a PlayStation 4 game that I... Not really going to play that often on, on PS4 games. So, this is going to be my uh, in-depth review of the first 20 to 25 hours of Monster Hunter World. So... This is a game that I've wanted to play for a long time, but never really had a desire to with the systems it was on, just because of the graphical quality and of the the game mechanics that were involved with it. With it. Um, like I believe the last one, some of them have been on DS, and I've never been a Nintendo guy ever since I was a kid. Um, so I I never picked up those those consoles. Um, what I saw on other other channels play Monster Hunter, I was like, okay, it's a great, great premise for a game. Um, if you've ever played, uh, what was it, Dark Arisen, uh, that that game that lets you climb on monsters and target specific body parts, that was about as close as you can get to the mechanics of the game. But I was really kind of lacking. It was more like an RPG slash action game than you know a uh, Monster Hunter game. So getting back to Monster Hunter World, I was very intrigued by it because I I liked the way that the premise was, okay, you start off, your, your character is your character, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot of buffs like RPG-wise, like your level won't go up, but the monsters that you attack and kill for their material will let you grind up uh, depending on how your playstyle is. So going into it, here's how my playstyle went. I started out, I went through all the weapons, thinking, okay, what's what best suits my playstyle? There's 14 different weapons. So, if you're a Dark Souls fan, or God of War 3 fan, or Gears of War fan, or anything, any, any first person or third person action or shooter game that you've ever played in the past, this game pretty much has a weapon for you. Uh, so, if you're into shooters that you just kind of kite the enemy around, they have a bow for that if you're more of a sniper or support they have a weapon for that if you're about you know big you know uh cloud final fantasy 7 big swinging sword they have one for that if you just want to take a huge hammer and get close and beat the crap they have they have a weapon for almost every play style you can think of uh fast nimble quick you know agile tanky whatever your play style is i had uh the sword and shield which is what I saw on there, a, a beginner build, but I've really liked playing with it because of the amount of attacks I can do at one time using light light attack. And because as a shield, uh, you can also do a blunt attack as well. So on some monsters, blunt attacks work better than uh, sharp attacks. So with this one, it gives me an option. I can use either or to knock... Uh, body parts off of monsters if they're they're chipped off or to slice off specific like a tail and get a specific um, or for that so it starts you off you know get the tutorial get you get on the island you get your weapon you get your base layout all that's good stuff if you've seen any YouTube tutorial for it you'll you'll know what to expect so going through though the progression system is very very good because if you just want to kind of go through the campaign, you can. You can just go through and you, with what you pick up from all the side missions and side quests and, you know, the investigations and the resource gathering, all that, you can go through the game and still have a weapon that will get uh, grind up through through the main story, at least up till now I have, that is still a high quality weapon and, and you're not going to be behind. Um, just because... They have one where it's basically a bone set weapon, where if you just basically go to bone piles or, you know, just uh, the monster that you're required to kill during the campaign, it will give you enough to level up as you go from section to section through the main campaign story. Because you can't really go ahead. Your, your armor and your crafting kind of level up along with the campaign. So you, it's not like you can, you know, take on a boss level of, like, the third area of the game uh, with just your beginning you know uh, weapon set and you can't really grind up that much to make 
sure you're overpowered that you can just kill in five minutes or just continuously knock it out, knock it out, you know, and then stun the enemy and then just, you know, take it down without having it move more than once or twice. So this game has regular regular monsters uh, that are carnivores that you can do multiple things with. You can hunt them. Uh, you can take on missions to hunt them and get rewards for it. Um, there are herbivores as well that you can just get material, materials from, or if there's a mission to just call, call them, you can do that too. And then you have like the mini bosses, I guess you could call them. Usually it's a bigger version of the regular monsters that you see in any map, but sometimes it's just like, oh, there's just, you know, three mini bosses and they have like the map boss. So on the first one, on the first section, there's a T-Rex looking thing that breathes fire at you. Uh, for its second form, that is hard as heck. Just because the fire can literally kick the crap out of you. Um, and if you want to grind that you're, that boss, you're going to have to basically invest in fire-resistant armor, which basically comes from the, the monster that you're hunting. So there's stuff you can do in the meantime to help yourself out. There's meals you can eat that give you buffs for, for, for a certain amount of time. There's... Uh, items you can buy that can help you. There's uh, stun items, which basically, you know, if you're fighting a large monster, you can uh, use a, what's it, a, like a bright bug that, that you can shoot at the monster, and then it'll stun them for a couple seconds. And that, I think, is a huge, huge help to taking down the larger monsters because they move around so much sometimes that just getting to them is hard. And... Your little cat helper that attacks and you know defends and helps you out and is your support system. If it's not going after you, but going after that for some portion of time, it's almost really hard to know what it's gonna, what the the mini bosses are gonna do. Even though there's a specific set of patterns to the bosses, it is very hard to kind of guess what they're gonna do whenever you're not the constant uh, target of it. But the, the downside is is that if you don't bring your cat along and you need healing, like, or any of these other things that they do for you, you kind of have to rely on yourself, and the bosses don't really give you a lot of time uh, if you have a slow potion potion chug or, you know, trying to sharpen your weapon, you know, using five seconds of that, and then it's like, well, it's not going to stand there for five seconds unless, one, you're in a way, or two, you kind of catch it in a, in a weird area where it can't, or it misses its attack and it can't really get you until uh, you're ready to come out. But going on, like I said, the progression is very steady. So if you just want to go through the campaign, your weapon, you can level up your uh, just a basic weapon um, throughout the whole thing, it looks like, and still be, you know, competent. And, but it'll be a little bit harder, but you'll still be competent. But if you want to grind away for elemental weapons, like I said, the T-Rex from the first area, it's the Anginath, you can get a weapon that will do fire damage as well. <laughs> Once you grind it out and you get that specific piece you need. But the problem is is that if you're trying to do this all yourself, it's going to be very hard and the grind is going to be for real. Because to capture the monsters gives you slightly better rewards. But there's no guarantee you're going to get that one piece you need for the weapon or armor set that you're trying to go for. So this next portion is genius. They have an SOS system where you can go into someone else's game, if they need help taking out a specific monster that you've hunted before, you can go in with three other people and make it a lot easier to take down this, this monster. And I did this for the first time today, just because I've been getting along pretty fine and I didn't really care about you know the weapons that were uh, available because they were lower damage than what, than what I had. But I may have to go back and do this again because Whenever I went through, instead of uh, killing it at the end, they captured it and I got more rewards for it. And it was a lot faster than doing it myself because I was taking on the main, the uh, level boss of the Coral Highlands, which is like the third main area of the game. And I'd taken it down a couple of times before. I was just getting, you know, the armor set just to get it and to get through with, uh, another side mission where I had to take down big bosses a couple of times. And because they captured it and because I got better rewards for it, I got to level up two other sets of armor that I probably would have had to do two more times with. 
The other thing is that if you're trying to take on a main boss um, by yourself and you, and you don't have an overpowered weapon or something that's slightly better than what the level um, that you're on requires, the boss can run away. That's a, the other part of this is that there are sections on the boss where you can do more damage uh, and get, I guess you call, can call them semi-critical hits. It's not going to be that much more damage. It's not going to do like triple, but it's going to do sometimes uh, like a point and a half to two times uh, the damage of your regular attacks if you hit them in that area. The problem with that is that they move around so much uh, until you get them to stand still for just a couple seconds and then unload on them. Sometimes if you, like the sword and shield I have, the sword is not that long. It attacks fast, but you have to get right up against the monster in order to, to do damage to it. And because even with the lock-on option, if I'm trying to attack a tail or a head or, you know, the feet and it's on its, on its side, you know, wiggling around and it's stunned, sometimes when you attack and you're trying to do a combo, if you're facing one direction but he moves past, like, if you're a foot away from a tail, let's say, and then you attack, and but your attack animation puts you a foot closer, then you do the rest of your combo, the three other hits after that, he may have the first critical attack, but then if once they move closer, because of their animations, even though the monster is stationary, the next couple attacks may just be regular attacks on another part of the monster. So there is some, some downside to that of uh, your combos not really... I would rather have them almost stationary because rather than having the movement combos because if by the time you get close enough to do them, sometimes by the time you finish a combo, and, and, and when you finish your combo, that's usually your strongest strikes, you're not hitting the monster anymore. So you got to kind of really be careful if you're going to do that, that you have the right angle on the monster. So going through, there's lots of NPCs. There's decent enough voice acting in it. There's not a ton of voice acting, though. Uh, so the, not everything in this game is going to be... Not every line is going to be voice acted. It's like the main points of the game are and the cutscenes are. But that's about it, which I like. I don't want to have to, you know, listen to someone's uh, full... Even though the voice acting is good, I don't want to listen to the full game on, on, uh, on voice if I can just read through it faster. So... Other than that, uh, gosh, what else can I say? Like I said, the mechanics are good. The The combat is, is very good. The progression's very good. I haven't really had to deal with the grind too much yet. I've usually gotten everything I've, I wanted from the armor sets. The weapon sets are a lot harder to level up, though. Just because the armor set, usually if you just attack uh, a mini boss a couple times, you'll usually get the items you need, whether you capture it or if you just, you know... Uh, destroy it and get its material that way but yeah I may have to go back and just to see if the weapons I'm missing out on are any better than what I'm using now and that goes back to another thing because I tried the long sword which is basically a two handed you know oversized katana looking thing and I thought oh that has an attack value of 294 mine's only 196 for my uh, fully upgraded sword and shield I've got to be doing at least twice you know at least a point and a half or maybe even twice the damage with this. So I spent some resources and gotten the second tier of it, which was pretty much on level with what I was using the sword and shield for. I was doing the same damage or less. Even on on the monsters I was uh, hitting before, I'm like, why am I doing the same or less damage when the attack value is at like 296 and it's almost it's about 100 more than my other one. Why am I doing less damage on this? And then I realized, oh, that's because they want you to, to charge up the sword and use your overpowered attacks once you do. But the problem, like I said before, is that some of these monsters move so fast that you either have to have perfect timing or you have to switch weapons. Because by the, even though you have a longer weapon and you hit them a little bit more often, the, the odds that you're going to hit them with your charge attack by yourself and get those critical hits that you need are going to be very very lower percentage wise and if you just go in there with a faster weapon uh, with a lower attack and get your critical hits that you need so that's why I found so far like I said unless unless some of the other weapons I'll try out later like maybe the the hammer or the 
the Buster Sword, the are unless the damage outputs are significantly greater, at least double what I'm using now, I don't see any reason to do it because you do higher damage with those weapons, but the attack is so slow and sometimes like I said, the monsters move so fast that if you you're doing a combo and you and you miss or the or if the monster moves, you're gonna be basically wasting your time because even if you stick with it, heal yourself and get to like multiple locations to try to, you know, kill the the boss, uh the mini boss, it can just get out of there if you use too much time. If you use like I think I think it's like ten or fifteen there's some time frame for, for the bosses out there. If you take too much time, they'll just leave. I'm like, oh I'm running away or flying away now. I'm not coming back and you just wasted all that time and effort. I don't agree with that. I think that the boss should, should stick around until either you kill it or it kills you. For it to just leave, you can, I guess you could do an SOS and ask people to help you, but you know, if you don't have good internet or uh, you don't feel like playing with other people, you may just want to go into other someone else's mission and just try to take it down that way. Um, because that's where the, the, the single player kind of uh, drops drops down a little bit, it kind of forces you to do the multiplayer if you want to get everything you want out of the game. So you, you can do everything in single player if you stick with it long enough, but you're going to have a lot easier time playing with other people to help you out to to get the monsters you want to destroy and the, the items you want to, to craft. So all in all, if I had to give this a score, I'd give this, oh gosh, I still have to give it a 10 out of 10. Like, this is a perfect game for the genre. If you're looking to hunt monsters, grind up, uh, use buffs, use tactics, be proficient with any number of 14 different weapons, depending on how your play style is, this game does it all flawlessly. The, the only slight drawbacks, like I said, are very small. So it's almost like Dark Souls. Like, you've got to kind of get good with it. You kind of kind of know your weapon and know the monsters well enough so that you get better at at it but sometimes it's just not enough sometimes you just have to ask for help so even though those are I would say detracts a little bit from it they do have methods in there to make up for that so it's not enough to take off anything from the game because it gives you a solution to the problem I just mentioned that if you're so all right, I've already gone through it in length. I'm not going to uh, redo it again uh, for the points. But, yeah, if I had to give it a score, I'd definitely give it a 10 out of 10. If you like the games like this or if you like something like Dark Souls where you're looking to test yourself against harder and harder opponents or, you know, just uh, go in, learn patterns, and level up your gear, uh, I would definitely recommend it as a buy. I have it on Gamefly right now. As soon as I'm through with it, I may just buy it and just go back to it, especially if they got... DLC coming for this game anytime soon. So once again, thank y'all so much for watching. This is Andrew T coming at you. What a great day for a replay. Y'all have a good one.